Hey guys, welcome back to another Creative Tap tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the range selector within uh, After Effects and how we can apply it to text layers, okay? So we've got a very simple animation. Um, this isn't using a text preset. This is actually built using some animators within text layers and using the range selector, okay? So quite a simple animation, but once you once you utilize the power of the range selector and all the animators within the text layer itself, um, you can do crazy, crazy stuff. So this only took me about five minutes to create, um, and it is quite simple, but let's get on in and I'll show you how it works. So let's close that. Um, going to delete all these now and let's start from scratch so I'm going to go for a nice solid layer so layer new solid and I'm gonna go with this color this is what I wanted to use um, I'm gonna get my text uh, text tool and I'm gonna to type range selector or you can type anything you want it can be your logo now if I want to if I want this centered to the middle um, when I'm clicking and dragging, I can just hold control and it'll snap like so to the middle line. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, you can also use the align things by here as well if you want to, but I'm, I'm fine with this. Right, so what I want to do next is if you remember my example, I had two lines going across just to make it look nicer. So I'm just going to click off these and I'm going to get my pen tool and I've set my stroke to this nice red color and a 12 pixel width. That's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is click here, click here, and we should have a nice red line. That's nice. So I'm going to come into my shape layer, come into the drop down, come into the contents, shape one. So let's rename this to top line. And I'm going to click it again and control D. So we've got top line two. And I'll rename this to bottom, bottom, ah, there we go. So many spelling mistakes bottom line there we go okay what I want to do now is just select this bottom line and move it down I'm holding shift as well to keep it uh, just moving down along the Y axis okay and I've got something that looks pretty pretty neat there okay so the next thing I want to do is start actually animating this text so let's rename the shape layer to lines and we can be done with this and let's bring the text layer to the top because this is what we want to focus on okay now if we go into the drop down You've got text, we've got some stuff in here like source text, path options and all that. And you've got transform, you know, standard transform stuff. Now, by here we've got something called animate. So let's say we want to animate the scale. Give that a click. And now, instead of going into the transform and animating the scale there, you've got a lot more control doing it this way. We've got something called animator 1, which is just this scale here. And you can see as I click and drag it scales all the letters up individually, but together. Uh, and then you've got, um, you'll have a range selector. Here it is. So in Animator 1, you've got the scale. And then you've got this range selector as well. Okay. Now it's currently set 0 to a, start at 0, which is by here, and end at 100, which is by here. So what it's saying, 0 and 100, it's got all of these selected, and it's going to scale all of them up. Now, if I dial this down to, let's say, end 50. Basically, it's going to do the first 50%. So you can see that I can actually click and drag the range of where I want this scale to appear. Okay, so let's say I want it just on one letter. That starts at zero and ends at 7%. Okay, now I've also down here got this um, offset. So you can see by clicking and dragging, you can scale them one by one. Now this, this going along here, these two lines, this is the range. Okay, um, and we've set that. So all we need to do is animate the offset. So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to click to set a keyframe. And I'm going to come to about two seconds in. And then I'm going to take this all the way up so it, it finishes at 100. OK, so what we've got at the moment is just a basic um, just a basic animation of them scaling up. Now you'll see when it gets to the end of range, it pauses just before it does the S. OK, and this is because if you look again, this is because if we come into the advanced settings of the range selector, you've got based on characters or based on characters excluding spaces. So it's not going to bother because actually what it's doing is scaling up that space, but you know you can't see it because it's empty. So if you click characters excluding spaces, you can see it just changed a little bit. It went a little bit further on in time. Um, 
and all it's doing is it's gonna it's gonna ignore that space now and go straight onto the S. Okay, so it's a little bit smoother now. So that's good. Now, within this animator, we can also add other properties. So just like when we went into the animate, we can also add a skew or rotation or whatever we want. But I'm just gonna add a fill. Okay, so if we go fill and then RGB. And what this what this means is when this range is animating through, just like the scale, it's going to change the color as well. But I want to change my fill color to, I don't know, a lighter sort of blue, sort of a bit of a desaturated lighter blue, like so. And it's using this offset again. So the range in Animator 1, the range is already set. It's already keyframed, set at 0 to 7%, and the offset is animated, okay? And this range selector is taken into account scale and fill color. Okay, so when it goes through, it alters the color and the scale, and that's quite nice. That's sort of nice and subtle, nice subtle animation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this animator to um, scale and color. Simple. So I know whenever I drop down, this is scale and color. So the range selector for the scale and color, and then scale and fill by here. Okay, so it may be that you want to animate something else, but you don't want it to be within affected by this same range selector, and that's totally normal. So what I'm going to do is I want to animate the opacity. So instead of going to add and add in the opacity, um, I'm going to click out of here. I've renamed that, and I'm just going to reselect this layer at the top and go animate opacity. Okay, and I'll give that a click. And now we've got another animator. So just so I know what it is, I'm going to click it, hit enter, and rename this to Opacity Animator. Okay, and I can drop down, and I've got a range selector in there and the opacity. So if I extend that down, it's going 0 to 100. So you'd expect if I change the opacity, it does it for all of them. But I kind of want it to animate in. So let's set it to 0. Okay, now let's come to the beginning. What I can basically is doing zero to a hundred, like I said. So if I were to animate the start, you can see up from zero, then you can see actually it's going to animate in like so. And I've already got these keyframes here as little dots because we haven't extended them down, we haven't collapsed them down like so. But I don't want to. I've got these as guides basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, at zero, I no at, at the beginning I want the start to be on zero, so I set a keyframe. And by the time we get to two seconds, I want it to be completed all the way, so it's all faded in. Now the issue is, when I went into the scale and color, I went into the advanced tab and changed it to characters excluding spaces, so this wouldn't match up completely or perfectly, so I've just got to change this one to characters excluding spaces as well. So now what I'll have is, if we play this through, We've got the scale and the color animated along with the fade, and the fade is on a separate animator. So just to reiterate, you've got the scale and color affected by this range selector, and you've got the opacity animator done by this one. So this one, this range selector was just set and then animated the offset, and this one, we just animated the start position because it does zero to 100, and then we bring it up as it goes through, okay? And we've got a really, really nice, simple animation. So the amount of stuff you can do with this is crazy. If we were to go back into the scale and color one, let's have a look. Um, and I'm going to turn off the opacity one for now. Um, if we go to, to go back into the scale and color, you can add a property. Let's add a rotation. And let's rotate the mount. So you can see that if I go along with this, it's going to kind of rotate and scale. So bit of a weird one, I wouldn't want that, um, but you can use it subtly and you've got loads of stuff you can kind of add in here, okay? Um, so I'm going to leave the tutorial there, uh, that's how you use the range selector, let's turn opacity animator back on, that's how you use the range, range selector to make a nice sort of subtle smooth uh, text animation without using text presets. Okay, cheers, bye.